So hello and welcome everyone. My name is Anupriya Pandey. I am a writer, editor and podcaster at Ink Feathers Publishing. So today's session is going to be a very interesting one. We are going to uh, talk to the author of a beautiful beautiful book which is a collection of many mesmerizing and fascinating poems. So uh, it begins with the book begins with two lines which I personally found very beautiful. So how vast is the universe that we live in and how vast is the one that we can imagine. So this is how the book begins. Tell me how would somebody not want to read it till the end. So today we have with us Ziad Dib Jirish, the author of the book The Nightingale. Make sure you stick till the end of this session because you'll have a lot to take from this. So Ziad is from Lebanon. I'm very pleased to welcome you here, Ziad. And, uh, hello, Anupriya. Hello. <laughs> so, in the beginning, I would want to ask from you your own story. Please tell us a little about yourself and a little about your life there. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for this beautiful introduction. Uh, well, my name is uh, Ziad or Ziad from Lebanon. I work as a uh, nurse in the hospital. I'm a specialized nurse in cardiac health and I grew up in a village in North Lebanon uh, called Kusba. We have there a valley and a river, so I got connected a little bit with nature while growing up. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've got uh, influenced by my father who was a teacher. So okay. he kept telling me, telling me quotes and uh, verses of poetry. So I grew up learning how to think in a quotes uh, mindset and poetry and uh, deep thinking, if you want. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that is how you started writing. Exactly, exactly. My father died in two thousand and four. But okay. I, uh, I keep hearing his voice and the uh, poetry he used to say to me. Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah that happens actually, right? <laughs> because uh, that is also high, how I got, I won't say that I'm a writer, but that is how my interest for literature began. Because uh, people elder to me used to recite poems and used to tell about all these stories. So yeah, exactly. I can relate to that. Actually, I was going to ask this only. Do you remember when you started writing? How did you get into it? Uh, yes, uh, sure. While my first uh, author that I used to love to read hmm. is Zebran, and still he's my favorite Lebanese author. Uh, his name is Zebran Khalil Zebran. Do you know him? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, uh, firstly, I got influenced by my father and by Gibran's writing. So, I started writing, um, let's say, 10 to 15 years ago, in Arabic, only in Arabic. Mm. But uh, the works of Gibran led me to investigate more his work. And I knew that Gibran's work was divided uh, into Arabic, and English. English. He wrote many books originally in English. So believe it or not, I learned English specifically to investigate more and to study more the work of Gibran Khalil Gibran. So I wow. went from his Arabic work into the English work. For example, uh, the the Prophet hmm. by Gibran and Sand and Foam. This is another book written in English. Yeah. So I just wanted to learn more English, just to study more this, this, this particular uh, poet or That's writer. That's great. Okay. Yes. And then I I went from Gibran to English poet like William Wordsworth and William Blake. Hmm. Actually, I uh, I read some uh, somewhere uh, who were the influencers. Of Gibran, of Gibran, 
Okay. And they say that Gibran used to read William Blake. So, okay, if Gibran <laughs> used to read William Blake, I will go to William Blake too. So I went to William Blake, William Wordsworth, all the romantics. The wow. romantics. So you are influenced yes. by the romantics. Absolutely. Nature, nature, always. Hmm. Nature and love, yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so, uh, like writing can be your hobby. You have been doing that for a very long time now. But then how did you decide to get into the publishing process? How, uh, when did you decide that I want my work to be published? I want the people to read it. When did that happen? Or how did that happen? You are right. You are, this is a very nice question, by the way. Lots of people write, but few publish their work. I honestly encourage all people to publish their work because I, th I think publishing is like a two-edged sword. Hmm. It's like uh, you cut with two sides. Firstly, uh, it helps you promote your work. There is no better, more professional way than publishing to promote your work. Right. Firstly. Secondly, it protects your work because there is a lot of thieves thieves of intellectual property so uh, maybe anyone can go through my instagram account and say okay this poem is mine no it's not yours i've been published so it's right. protected so uh, it's it's very nice to be to be published yeah screenshotting and uploading that is what goes on these days <laughs> <laughs> so are you on instagram uh Sadly, sadly, I lost, I accidentally lost my poetry account. I used to have 4.8k followers. So I was going, uh, I wanted to disable it temporarily. So I don't know what happened. I lost it. Now I'm using my personal one with 200 oh. followers, maybe only. So do you post poetry there? Yes, of, of course, of course. Nice. Uh, and what about this book? When did you start writing it? Was Is this a collection of the poems that you have been writing for a long time or did you write them specifically for this book? Okay, uh, actually these poems are the first ones that I wrote in English. Okay. And uh, it's a collection be between uh, the, the poems of my own stories and the stories of my friends. Life mm. events, life circumstances, uh, bad ones, good ones, joyous, uh, maybe a little bit sad. So mm. it's a collection. Uh, for example, the death of my father uh, led me to write a poem for the, the death of my sister also. Uh, the mm. the love that I felt one day, the story of my friends, love also. So it's a collection of uh, feelings, if you want. Yeah. Experiences, okay. experiences of my own self and my friends, members of my family too. Mm. Yeah. So how did the title come up? The Nightingale. Oh, the title. Yes. The title. Well, I think. Because poetry uh, differs a little bit from writing. Poetry is writing, but a very special form of writing. It has some rhyme in it. Yeah, it has right. some music in it. It sounds differently. So a nightingale is a stinging bird, right? Mm. Okay, so I, I feel like, I feel poets are nightingales because they sing just as the birds yeah and also they are vastly misunderstood so when you when you hear a nightingale singing do you understand what the nightingale is saying no you may you may be think that this bird is happy my, the bird may not I be happy that, but yeah. still singing yes mm. so poets really uh, are vastly misunderstood that's what i think so yeah. that's why I think a poet is a nightingale. He's singing, always singing. I think Sometimes, writing a poem yeah. is is very difficult because 
writing story like according to me writing stories is a bit easier because in poems you you say a lot in just two sentences there is a lot to that there is a deeper meaning and there is a lot in in just two words maybe just like you said the nightingale there is a lot in that as well so yeah uh, yeah definitely writing stories uh, demands skills definitely hmm. but as as you said poetry is a little bit more uh, let me can i give an example yeah a small sure. one so uh, let if wanna say let's say that the i love the rain i can say that uh, i feel bliss when the rain falls mm-hmm. when the rain falls on my eye i feel bliss i'm i'm happy i can say this but i can also say that this rain has blessed my mood and i bless the rain on my weary eye okay what does so, that mean uh, so, yeah, so this sound. rain yes it sounds this rain has blessed my mood and i bless the rain on my weary eye so it mm-hmm. has rhyme it has structure it sounds differently it's like yeah, music yeah right obviously so, yes. yeah it does make sense i i always I, i always say i always say that poetry must be read and heard too if you do not hear poetry and you enjoy hearing it it's not poetry it's prose mm-hmm. which is v- perfectly fine but that was the first poetry it can be read with uh, with uh, the beauty of hearing too not only reading hmm yeah definitely it does make sense so had you already decided on the name the title or did you uh, decide at the end of the book after completing the book well uh, no uh, i decided the name maybe before completing the book because i for long i consider poets like birds so hmm. i said so you myself, always wanted, wanted your first book to uh, be called the nightingale okay you're right you're right i told myself right. when this is done this will be called the nightingale hmm. exactly and how was your journey writing the book like completing a book is a journey reading one is definitely so writing one is must be a longer one so how was your journey like well uh, my journey was like uh, like phases of if you more phases of moods and of joy and sorrow hmm. so the book is a co- is a collection of poems It's, they are not really connected with each other okay. so maybe two three poems are really happy two three poems are really sad when i'm sad i made some when i'm happy i made some the journey was like a uh, a visit to the nature you go to into a valley for once uh, up mm. a hill once mountain once Hmm. beneath a tree with the shade maybe uh, in the sun lots of hmm. heat so it's a mixture of feelings hmm so do you remember your state of mind while writing any of the poems that are there in the book what you were going through or something that you you can share any memory com- connected with the book Well yes I I do, I do remember many actually uh, I can share one I can share the poem share as uh, many as you want Thank you thank you mm-hmm. uh, the poem the lot of a sister mm-hmm. This is a poem written on the occasion of the death of my sister I lost my sister to cancer in 2008 So I wrote a poem I uh, I wrote that uh, there were It's a, it's a little it is a little story about mm-hmm. two roses they were living together and one collector came and plucked the two roses from their plant so one rose went to a funeral and the other one went to a wedding so these roses were twins mm. but the the universe or the fate of one was to go to a funeral and to be put on a coffin we put white rose on coffin right mm. and the other one has the fate to be in a bouquet of a wedding bride so uh, this is life 
you never know mm. what will happen. So uh, the name, the lot of a sister, uh, because I, I consider that uh, this is this was the lot of my sister to be, uh, or to be lost prematurely. Mm. That's it. Mm. I'm I'm so sorry to hear that, but like you Thank had you. the power to convert your grief into something beautiful that can reach to people that is a really big thing thank you thank you exactly exactly uh, by the way the book begins happily it mm. converts in the middle and a little bit it converts to be a little bit sad towards the end i arranged the poems to be like that hmm okay that is how life goes oh yes yes mm. many yes so while writing the poems did you ever experience a writer's block uh, if you did how did you overcome it did you ever feel like you should write but you were not able to write well this is a very very nice thank you for this very nice question actually i didn't even uh, know about this term writer's block but hmm. few months ago i, I read it and uh, i was like it's normal because in all phases of life growth is always in phases look at the nature mm. the spring winter summer so uh, you cannot write all the time no mm. one can work all the time so writer's block it's the natural phase of mm. uh, of maybe uh, resting a natural phase i think it's a cycle so I don't consider it a block. I, I consider it like as like like the waves of the sea. You cannot have always waves coming to the shore. The one wave, then you have rest two, three seconds, then another wave. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to describe it. Yeah, and uh, you have sometimes a high tide, sometimes a low tide. It's nature. Yeah. You cannot always have water, same amount of water and the same space of sand. So mm. that's it. It's a uh, it's a continuous uh, cascade of phases. Mm. So writer's block is a natural rest. That's it, accept it. I accept writer's block. It's not a block, it's uh, just a nature. It's a process. To rest. Yes, it's a process. Want to rest a bit, mm. okay, fine. Mm. I think nowadays artists doing any anything they, uh, they, they they live in a constant pressure because they think that they are expected to create something on a regular basic basis like on instagram or on any other platform so i think yes. this is something to worry about we should not look at art like we need to create it at a regular time we need to get it out there so this is something yeah, that is around. going on so do you have something to say about that I can say that you're perfectly right about this. We should not pressurize ourselves. It's not a duty to write. If you feel like writing, go on. If you don't feel like, don't pressurize yourself. Don't put that uh, big pressure because writing is, uh, as, as you said, writing and painting and all forms of art are ways of expression. Hmm. So when someone expresses himself or herself is when they need to so if you need mm. to express yourself go on express write paint sculpt dance sing mm -hmm. if you don't need to express yourself don't you don't have yeah. to that's it Live simply <laughs> yeah yeah yes and uh, you also paint right you're a right. painter too yes uh, so like i already asked you do you think there is a similarity between your paintings and your writings or do you feel that your state of mind is uh, somewhat same when you are doing uh, any of these art forms? Well, uh, the link between the two begin, began uh, first when I, when I read William Blake. Okay. Because William Blake was a very successful and skilled poet and he included paintings and drawings in his work. 
So he was mm. a painter and a writer. Mm. So uh, that motivated me at the beginning. Because okay. lots of paintings are really, for example, in the book, you can see the painting called The, the Curse of the Albatross. Hmm. It's a painting inspired by the poem by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, The Rhymes of the Ancient Mariner, if you know it. So this is directly linked to poetry, a painting inspired by a poem. Hmm. Yeah. There is another, uh, there's another painting that called, that's called William and Dorothy Wordsworth. I painted William Wordsworth, which is a famous poet. I painted hmm. him and his sister while visiting a lake in in UK, hmm. I painted the moment when he got inspired to write his famous poem, The Daffodils. So I painted him, okay. his sister, and the field of daffodils beside the lake. So oh, wow. yes, my paintings are directly related to poetry, yes. Nice. Yes. Wow, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. And what would you say? What does writing mean to you? Personally, what is writing for you? Uh, when do you do it? The, like, I hope you get the question. Yes, I, I got it. Yes. <laughs> well, writing is not a duty. It will never be a duty. It is hmm. to me a space for expression. Hmm. A space that I use when I need to. It's like it's like uh, imagine I'm sitting in, in a hot summer day and there is a window beside me. So when I need fresh air, I open the window. This mm. is writing. I open the window to get fresh air, to mm. get uh, a little bit uh, of my stress out. This is a way to express myself, to relieve myself. Mm. This is writing. Yeah, I've heard a, write of, uh, a lot of writers say that it's a means to release what is there in the heart, in the mind. Exactly, exactly. Because the, the way of expression may not be suitable to all people. Hmm. And you cannot just go and speak to people and say your thoughts. Writing yeah. allows you to say those thoughts to an invisible crowd of people. Invisible audience, you write to mm. invisible audience, but mm. you write your exact thought and what you really want to say. Mm. And wh uh, wh when you write what you really want to say, you express yourself and you get released, of course. Mm. So how does it feel to see people reading your poems? How is that feeling or your pay or looking at your paintings? Well, it feels great, honestly. But more like I, I would like to have a review from people. Okay. Yeah. It's okay if they don't like. Hmm. But if they don't like and they want to criticize something, I would love to know what is it because uh, we always learn and we always look for be for better. So uh, I would love to hear from people the the feedback. Hmm. So everybody who would be watching this, this is for you. The book is available on Ink Feathers store and on Amazon. So if you still haven't bought it, go there, explore it and uh, yeah, write a review. <laughs> Give yes, us course. the tell, feedback. Tell, tell, please tell me what you think about it. Hmm, right. So do you have the book or do you have any piece of writing with you right now which you can recite? Is it possible for you right now? Honestly, I don't have any. Okay, no, no problem. I know you are at your workplace. It must be difficult. Yes, <laughs> well, that's it. That's it. Hmm. Anything else I'm, that you would want to? By the way, yeah. By, by the way, I'm working. Uh, my second book will be uh, filled with sonnets. It's a form of poetry. Hmm. It's Shakespearean sonnets. My first hmm. book do not include, does not include any of the sonnets. But my second one will include maybe 25 to 30 sonnets. Hmm. I, I have read some of your poems and just so you need a feedback. I won't say that, that I know about poems a lot, but I found them really beautiful. And it got me into thinking about a lot of things. 
so uh, those that were available for uh, you know uh, on the uh, website only there are one or two poems that we can read before buying the book so i went through them oh, and they are really beautiful thank you so, thank you which which one do you remember the uh, the title uh, i read them yesterday i i don't remember that i can i'll tell you just wait it's okay it's okay just because you needed a review <laughs> and i'm sure many people must have shared with you yeah i'll tell you anything else that you'd want to share that you would want to tell the listeners who would be watching this well i want to share that uh, for all those who think that they may be uh, they are maybe writers or not please if you write something go if you want to write something go on write them write mm. your thoughts if you like to paint don't hesitate paint whatever you like express yourselves and if you have some writings please publish it yeah publish your writings show us your paintings do not uh, do not light the uh, the candle and put it underneath a table or in the closet write paint express yourself and let your candle be visible so i encourage people to express themselves to share their thoughts and to uh, just to be themselves that's it And thank you very much. By the way, I want to also share that Ink Feathers is a very professional team. Uh, thank you so much. All the journey was really, really professional. Very friendly approach. Follow up is amazing. And I sometimes I forgot to reply or uh, I forgot the email. So you keep following up and you keep reminding me. And you are so patient. For, th- thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. So I read the birth of a nightingale and uh, northern eyes. Oh. I read oh, both these okay. poems, and yeah, Great. these are beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, taking out your time on a very busy day. I think and sharing you, all of thank that. You. Thank you so much.